Hello, welcome to our channel and today we are going to discuss about centripetal force and centripetal acceleration and we will derive the equation for centripetal acceleration. But before continuing to the topic, kindly click on the like and subscribe button. We know that centripetal force is the force which compels a body to move in a circular path. And the centripetal acceleration is due to the centripetal force. When an object is rotating along a circular path, then the velocity is constantly changing. And the velocity we know is a vector quantity. So when the object is here at point V1, it has a direction along uh, this side and when it reached to this V2 then its direction changed from this side to this side when it reached to this point the direction will be along this side. So the direction of the velocity is constantly changing and this change in the velocity direction is due to the centripetal acceleration. Now remember when the object is rotating along this circular path then the direction of the velocity is changing which means there is change in the velocity but there is no change in the speed because there is no change in the magnitude. Velocity is a vector quantity, it has a magnitude and direction while speed is a scalar quantity. So the magnitude remains the same but only the direction of this object is changing. That's why we have change in the velocity but there will be no change in the speed of the object. Now let's consider for deriving the value of centripetal acceleration. Let's consider we have an object that is at this point V1 and it has a velocity of V1 at this point. This is the radius of the circular path. For example, these are circles, so we have this radius of this circle. Now, after some time, the velocity will change from V1 to V2 and it will travel some distance or displacement S. So, when the object reaches from V1 to V2, it has a velocity of V1 here, and when it reaches to this point, it will have velocity V2. Now we have two velocity vectors, this is V1 and this is V2. Uh, if we draw a, a line from this point V1 to the center of the circle and then if we draw another line from this V2 point to the center of the circle, we will have this triangle, let's say A, B and C. Now in this triangle, we have this length denoted by R. It will make a theta here and this is the arc length S. Now if we connect the tail of this vector V1 with the vector V2, for example we have this V1 and this is V2 and if we connect this tail of this vector with this vector, we will have this new triangle uh, V2, this is V1 and if we connect this point with this point then we will have this triangle O, A, B for example. And here, uh, this length from here to here determines the change in the velocity. So we can denote this by del V or we can say del V is equal to V2 minus V1 which is the change in the velocity after del t time and during this del t time it will travel a distance from this v1 point to point v2. Now from the definition of theta or the angular displacement we know that the angle subtended at the center of the circle is equal to the arc length divided by radius of the circle. So we have theta 1 is equal to S divided by R where S is this arc length and R is the radius of this circle and this is the definition of theta. Now in the triangle, the second triangle we will have this theta 2 and again defining this theta 2 we will have theta 2 is equal to arc length, this is the arc length we can denote this by del V which represents the change in the velocity 
divided by v1. Now here we have taken this as v. We have theta2 is equal to del v divided by v. And this v2 is equal to v1 because they have the same magnitude. So we can say the speed is the same. So we have v2 is equal to v1 is equal to v. We just denoted this by velocity speed v. Now we have theta2 is equal to del v divided by v from the second triangle. Now we can compare these two triangles and we can say theta1 is equal to theta2 because they are the same triangles. And if theta1 is equal to theta2, we will have uh, this is the value of theta2 del v divided by v is equal to s divided by r. The value of theta1 is s divided by r. And this s is the arc length s which the object traveled during some time from point v1 to point v2. So from the definition of velocity, we know that velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. Solving this equation for displacement s, we will have s is equal to v del t. So we can replace the value of s here with v del t. We will have theta 1 is equal to v del t divided by r. Now we can compare this theta 1 with theta 2 and we will have del v divided by v which is the value of theta 2 is equal to v del t divided by r which is the value of theta 1. Now multiplying both the sides with velocity v or speed v on this side of the equation and on this side of the equation this v will cancel out with this v and this v will multiply with this v we will have v square here and dividing both the sides of this equation by del t and del t so this del t here will cancel out with this del t and we will have del v divided by del t so we have del v divided by del t is equal to v square divided by r. Now according to the definition of acceleration, we know that the time rate of change of velocity is known as acceleration. So del v del divided by del t is acceleration. So we have acceleration is equal to v square divided by r. And this is the value of centripetal acceleration which is equal to velocity square divided by radius of the circular path. And this centripetal acceleration is due to the centripetal force. Uh, when the object is moving along this circular path, it's the direction of the velocity is constantly changing due to the centripetal force. That's it. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe to you for more videos.